to welcome you on today's webinar about Digital Transformation App Services Market 2016. My name is Wiebke Lörcher, I'm Marketing Manager at PAC and I'm the moderator for today's webinar. Today's presenter is Dr. Christian Wieland. He is Vice President, BAS Services and Consulting at PAC Germany. You have got the opportunity, as an attendee, to write your questions in the chatter box on the right-hand side during the whole webinar. At the end of the webinar, we have got the opportunity to answer those questions. Christian will answer as many questions as he can after the webinar, or in addition, we write an email so everybody gets an answer he needs and uh, you will have the opportunity to get all slides afterwards. Please contact me. My email address is w.lercher, L-O-E-R-C-H-E-R, -E at packonline.com. And uh, yeah, now I hand over to Christian. Yeah, <clears throat> hello everybody. My name is Christian Wieland, uh, uh, and uh, uh, also a warm welcome from my side to the webinar on the Apps Market Service. Uh, and uh, before we start with the uh, Apps Market, um, it's uh, I want to give you a, a short introduction uh, about uh, how to put it into the digital transformation uh, journey as we want to see it here. Uh, and uh, we're starting with uh, some results of our CXO uh, 3000 survey that we do regularly uh, each year uh, about the business challenges since uh, digital transformation is uh, always also uh, related to the business challenges of the of uh, companies uh, we want to start here and uh, before we come to digital transformation uh, we see that uh, from our CXO study, where we've surveyed uh, 3,000 CXOs, uh, 98 or 89% of them said that their biggest business challenge is uh, the cost pressure. So um, that's certainly something that is not new. Uh, and 84% uh, said that this, the biggest challenge is growth, not news at all. And 83% uh, said that it is competition. So uh, the biggest business challenges that uh, companies are faced with uh, all over the world are cost pressure, growth, and competition, all over 80% here. And uh, these are yeah, challenges that we see uh, in, uh, in, in companies since economics was uh, invented uh, a couple hundred of years ago, so that are uh, is definitely something that is not new um, from uh, from this perspective. But uh, when we go into more detail, and uh, what we found here is that uh, when we take the business challenges, cost pressure, growth, and competition, that the companies find one answer to that this because uh, this is digital digital transformation. So the answer to cost pressure, growth, and competition is always also a digital uh, um, answer to this uh, to these challenges uh, because of 91% uh, of the uh, CXO said that uh, digital transformation is the answer to this uh, definitely it's not that everyone is a leader in digital transformation some have just uh, started the journey to digital transformation and uh, some are laggards and uh, some are very far ahead of the digital transformation journey. So uh, like uh, companies like Bosch that uh, a year ago just announced that uh, they will turn over from a manufacturing company or automotive supplier to a software and services uh, company. So that fundamentally changes the business model of Bosch and uh, this is definitely a digital uh, answer to the question uh, how to challenge cost pressure but um, more of a growth and competition. So I don't know if you know that uh, for instance Bosch has more than 60,000 developers uh, all over the world from their more than 200,000 uh, employees which is uh, a vast amount of uh, developers that they have and even more than for instance uh, companies like SAP or Salesforce.com or even Oracle have. Uh, as employees. So they dramatically changed their uh, business model and uh, are in 
these terms uh, far or more ahead of their competition um, than others. So they are far, a little bit far more ahead of the in the digital transformation journey. But we also observe uh, a lot of companies that are uh, in the digital transformation journey just started with the front uh, office uh, transformation. So everything that has to um, um, is related to omni-channel commerce or uh, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and some don't even have to start it. So 9% uh, said that they don't have an answer to the digital transformation. But anyway, 91% well, is uh, 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 the magic, uh, the, almost all companies uh, have started to think somehow digital. Uh, what is related to that is uh, that we see um, in EMEA a growth rate of uh, apps related IT services market in 2016 of 3.6%, uh, which is uh, yeah, staying a little bit flat uh, over the years. So it, uh, it is uh, uh, just in the, on the second digit or the, the, the first digit. It's um, uh, varying there. Uh, so it's not uh, not that big growth as one might expect if 91% of the companies say yeah, we are going to go uh, on a digital transformation journey. But when we look into a little bit more detail, we see that uh, there's uh, definitely growth in uh, digital related uh, IT services segments. So in terms of IoT or in terms of customer experience or interactive experience, we come to this in detail a little bit later, which is 12%. Uh, and in order to finance, if, you, if we see 3.6% growth in apps-related services, but uh, only 3.6% uh, growth in apps-related services, but 12% in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, digital-related services, it is uh, that somehow uh, companies have to find the money to finance it, and uh, it definitely uh, we see that some areas of the apps-related market or the total IT services market uh, has to somehow uh, decrease uh, the cost there in order to finance um, the the new stuff uh, that the companies uh, uh, want to implement when they go the digital way. So that's why we see uh, that the offshore rate in, uh, in, in EMEA is going to increase over the next years up to 23% in order to uh, also to stay competitive in terms of IT cost and reduce the uh, uh, cost pressure that the companies are faced with. So when we go into a little bit more detail uh, and we see uh, or spread the market into IoT, which is Industry 4.0, Smart X, uh, like Smart Health, Smart Metering, and so on, or Connected Car, uh, uh, or Interactive Experience, like Customer Experience or Employee Experience, and the last one, uh, the backend uh, systems, like ERP, CRM, and so on. Uh, then we see that uh, in, in Western Europe, unfortunately, we do not have that for, uh, for EMEA as a total yet. Uh, it's, uh, the numbers are uh, in, in production here, but we can, uh, if you have the CITSI subscription, you will find the numbers for whole EMEA uh, in, in the next couple of months. So the IT services uh, that we see here is uh, for IoT spending is uh, 29 billion uh, euros that we see in Western Europe, so uh, a big, uh, big amount of money, and we see here 20% growth in this market. When it comes to interactive experience, so everything that has to do with customer experience and so on, we see in the market of 31 billion uh, euros uh, that is spent in EMEA by, uh, by um, companies, uh, with a solid growth rate of uh, double digit 11%. Not that much as uh, in, in the IoT space, but 11% uh, is uh, 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 more than uh, what we see, for instance, in the, in the backend stuff. So the total apps-related IT services sums up at uh, 85 billion uh, euros. So uh, it's not that, uh, or what we see is that some of the IoT stuff and some of the inter experience uh, interactive experience uh, projects fall also into this uh, total apps related IT services market, but it's only 3.7%. Uh, 
Uh, this is due to the fact that we have some uh, really hot topics like the SAP HANA related CNSI services that we see in EMEA uh, on a total basis of 1.3 billion euros. So there's not much uh, in terms of application management and so on yet, but uh, we also see there uh, that uh, customers are now asking about more or different operating models, uh, so in, in terms of hosting, outsourcing, but also uh, a lot of cloud um, questions around uh, SAP HANA, for instance. Uh, there we see a market uh, that is growing in the next years until uh, 2019 uh, uh, around 70% uh, or 72% as the accumulated average growth rates uh, that we see here. Um, so a very hot market here. Uh, and in order to achieve uh, just 3.7%, uh, uh, the market must uh, decrease in other areas and we see that for instance in the non-SAP HANA related CNSI services where the market is shrinking over the next years on average uh, minus 4%. Uh, but it's uh, compared to the 1.3 billion CNSI market in the SAP HANA related CNSI, uh, you see that the uh, uh, consulting and system integration is, uh, but uh, it's a very huge market of 11.9 uh, 11 billion euros uh, um, that we see here, but on average it's uh, decreasing. When we come to where the market dynamic comes from uh, in terms of apps, uh, it's uh, also that we have some enabling technologies and uh, in order to that fit into the IoT and into the interactive experience. So all big uh, providers like Oracle, um, SAP and Salesforce, they all have uh, heavily invested in new enabling technology like mobility analytics, big data, so that's where HANA is, uh, for instance, or the uh, Salesforce Wave, or um, also the uh, Oracle Exalytics and so on. Uh, that, that's what we see here, and then the, the cloud model and the security. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have uh, yet uh, social um, numbers for the social market, but for the mobility market, we see a market uh, of 4.9 uh, billion uh, euros that we see here and a cumulated average growth rate of 32%. So everything that is linked to IoT, interactive and uh, even to backend scenarios uh, will uh, be somehow also be connected to mobility scenarios or to mobilize these scenarios that we see in the market. Next point would be analytics and big data, where the market is even a little bit bigger of 6.7 billion uh, IT services uh, revenue that we see, and it's growing fastly with 44% on average in the next uh, years till 2019. And the cloud market, uh, it's even bigger, it's now sums up to 23.4 billion euros and uh, on a very high growth rate of uh, 36%. And uh, the security part, everyone now uh, in, in the company said that's one of uh, one very big issue, but uh, it's a little bit more smaller market. It's uh, only 10.7 billion euros and a very good or a good growth rate of 10% compared to the average of 3.6%. When it comes to um, the service value chain, we see that uh, consulting, uh, is uh, uh, sums up to 10.3 billion euros uh, on uh, four point, on a growth rate of 4.9 percent. So uh, if it's consulting for topics like social mobility, analytics, cloud, and security, the growth rate is higher as we just have seen. But um, related to backend uh, scenarios, it's uh, it's uh, sometimes uh, it's even uh, decreasing. So that we only sum up at uh, or come up to a 4.9 percent growth rate here. So uh, projects that you find in the market should always uh, have an enabling component component in these projects in order to achieve higher growth rates here. Uh, also, uh, system integration, 49.5 billion euros uh, that we see for th 2016, 
and a growth rate of 4.1 percent, uh, 15 to 19, uh, that we see here. And application management uh, is uh, 20.9 uh, billion euros for EMEA and 2.3 uh, uh, percent that we see here. But uh, yeah. So that's uh, the apps related marketing in EMEA in terms of consulting system integration and application management. So you have to carefully uh, think about where to invest. And uh, uh, what's also new in this, um, if we come to application manage or apps related uh, services, is that we also see new competitions uh, arising uh, in, this, uh, in this field here. So for instance, uh, the uh, competition coming from industry companies, consultancies, agencies, and uh, service providers. So industry companies like Bosch and Siemens, they build up their own uh, um, IoT clouds, for instance, and Bosch is also investing in, in, uh, in uh, CNSI, but also uh, when they come to, uh, um, when they have their own cloud uh, offering into application management. So they are investing uh, also heavily, in, in, uh, heavily into, uh, service, uh, into the service value chain in terms of consulting and system integration. Uh, and they have a good standing there for their topic uh, like IoT that is also related to backend system integration uh, within the manufacturing companies. So they have a good positioning here. When it comes to consultancies, we see companies like PwC, KPMG or here for instance ENY uh, ENY is, for instance, the fastest growing SAP partner uh, in the world. They started uh, a couple of years ago, like uh, I think four, uh, five years uh, ago, uh, where they um, restarted their SAP business uh, within a new, or a, uh, yeah, within a new SAP practice and uh, grew up that practice uh, of, of a business of more over one billion uh, dollars uh, that they make in revenue in 2015 and 2016. So, uh, fast-growing company or SAP practice, for instance, here, but also PwC. After uh, selling the business, they now come up with a new practice and uh, also are very successful for because of their um, business relation that they have um, to the finance um, uh, finance departments, for instance. But we see also a new uh, competition coming up from WPP or Sapient Nitro that are, for instance, Sapient Nitro is a is a, is a long-term uh, SAP Hybris partner, and they have also invested in consulting and system integration pro. Um, um, uh, capabilities. And then we have the traditional IT providers like Capgemini and, and Accenture, for instance. Uh, what we see here is, um, what uh, we want to denote here is that the transformation that these companies have transformed also themselves and the value add that they offer is the business uh, and IT relationship that they bring into play here. Uh, the question now is what are the traditional um, IT providers doing here in terms of transformation? What's the value add that they bring to the table? Um, uh, and therefore we have a, just a small sidekick uh, where can you differentiate uh, in the market when it comes to transformation or digital transformation. Um, we can observe or categorize the three uh, roughly three types of change, or I like this model of three types of change uh, that I want to talk about here. So first of all, it's a developmental change, uh, where it's uh, about optimizing existing systems, like uh, when it comes to ma uh, managed systems, or where to body shopping, or some cloud-related CNSI, where only the technical parts are uh, interested. Uh, interesting. Then we have transitional change, uh, which is uh, bringing a system from A to B, like a greenfield, or no, not like a greenfield, but a, just a technical migration of, uh, for instance, S4HANA coming from SAP ERP uh, 6.0 uh, and bringing it to SAP S4HANA uh, in a, just in a technical way. 
And then we have transformational change, so bringing a system from A to an unknown B. So this would mean, for instance, uh, like um, like um, that um, uh, case that you might know, um, like Kesa, they are offering now to their customers air instead of compressors. That's one. Uh, um, uh, one uh, example that is uh, here. So bringing a system from A to B means also <clears throat> transforming the system that it is not um, uh, related to a manufacturing company only, but also brings into play that the company can now offer their components or their uh, machines that they are offering as a service. And therefore you have to somehow transform uh, the manufacturing company also into a, uh, into a service company and that has to be reflected also into the uh, into the backend systems but also into the front end system so uh, there comes everything together and it's t fundamentally changing also the business model of this uh, this company um, so when we when we see the type of uh, change uh, we see that uh, that de developmental change is uh, not uh, changing the value creation process uh, of the company, but when it comes to transformational change, it will change <coughs> the uh, type of value creation uh, within these companies. Um, Where's the room for differentiation now for uh, service providers that we see in the market? So when it comes to developmental change and also for transitional change, so just a technical migration from A to B, these are, in our opinion, uh, most of that are commodity services and you cannot uh, differentiate yourself uh, or as a service provider um, uh, or the when you differentiate, it's very much into the details. It's oftentimes a long-term relationship that you have, or uh, in, uh, sometimes uh, you have may have some uh, superior IP or tools that you can offer, but it's very much into the details. It's not that you can uh, that's uh, um, 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 a, a very good differentiator in the market. Oftentimes, when it comes to managed services or body shopping, uh, sometimes it's uh, the quality of the skills of the people that you have, and uh, there's always a shortage on the market to uh, special skills, uh, like, for instance, now HANA consultants, especially in the German market. <clears throat> But uh, uh, then it's uh, if it's not and it, if it's a managed service, then it's oftentimes only a price discussion that uh, you have with your customers. Uh, so more differentiating our services all around transformational change. So how can you bring a company from a from an a, a known system A to an unknown system B, not only a system but also a company uh, from a business standpoint? There you can differentiate. So the whole transformation from I produce machines like Kesa for compressors, uh, ref uh, and referring that to the uh, old uh, ERP backend system and so on, and uh, digitizing that, uh, to transforming the company, but also the um, the uh, IT infrastructure behind that uh, is uh, differentiating yourself. But differentiation is also, I talked a little bit about that, uh, are, uh, are solutions, but the more commodity it is, uh, the harder it is uh, for you to differentiate. And uh, if it's a developmental change, so standardized uh, processes and so on, it's very hard to differentiate yourself in terms of uh, digital transformation. <clears throat> when we talk about digital transformation, we always relate that also, or not relate that, but Digital transformation, in our point of view, is always uh, like the Kesa case, air instead of compression, uh, compressors, uh, a business transformation. So therefore, we put up a business transformation map uh, where we have, uh, first of all, the business opportunities and challenges. So why uh, do we have to transform our business? And then we have the objectives, the what, business transformation objects, and uh, if a 
complete company has to be changed or business has to be changed, then we have to uh, take a look at the processes, the technology, the people and the organization. And then we have the how, which is the business transformation value chain. So coming from strategy to transformation roadmap to transformation execution to industrialized change and then to measure change, <clears throat> which would be then the business transformation value chain. So it's the slightly or very much similar to the service value chain uh, that we have and uh, it, uh, can be transformed into that and we want to use that uh, in order to uh, somehow put in some uh, of the IT service providers here how they position in the market, in the EMEA market. So for instance now we take a look at Capgemini, they are, uh, or Capgemini technology here, they are focusing on processes and technology. So they are uh, a traditional IT service provider on the EMEA market and uh, uh, they do not go into detail in our organizational problems and do not go into detail into people problems, so like change management or uh, changing the work of the people, changing uh, um, the, the organization of the people, changing uh, the organization itself, what are the best legal entities and so on. Uh, they are pretty much focused on processes and technology in our point of view. When we come to another company like Tata, reflecting uh, pretty much the, or uh, resembling the, uh, pretty much the uh, Indian players on the EMEA market, uh, they are not that much into strategy. They entered the EMEA market uh, from a price perspective, so from industrializing change, uh, and now they are going up uh, to transformation roadmaps and to strategy roadmaps. That's why they also uh, bought uh, companies uh, within the uh, European market to have a European footprint here and also to offer consulting and strategy um, capabilities uh, within these markets. Uh, so they will now evolve upwards uh, to, uh, in terms of uh, transformation roadmap and strategy roadmap when it comes to processes and technology in our point of view. And then we have companies like uh, Accenture, uh, the market leader in this, uh, in, uh, for instance, in the SAP um, um, uh, technology market, but they have different growth platforms like Accenture Strategy, Accenture Consulting, Accenture Technology or Digital, Accenture Consulting and Accenture um, uh, Operations. And they are able to, um, to uh, cover the uh, whole business transformation value change from processes and technologies, but are now also able or have invested into uh, capabilities to uh, have strategies among, uh, around people and organization and have transformation roadmaps for them and also to enable them. But uh, they are now, like you might know the claim that they have uh, people first, so they are um, uh, focusing on the people uh, now and uh, focusing more on the transformation execution, so the change manage more into the change management uh, of the people um, and the affected workplace and so on. And then we have uh, PwC, so the, uh, they are standing for the consultancy here, and you see they are not into industrializing change, but they are in, in the strategy, transformation roadmap and transformation execution. They have built up capabilities uh, here uh, around everything, um, um, also working together with their uh, advisory organization that cover all, uh, all aspects of the uh, organizational change, but also on the people change. Uh, they are uh, only have a gap here in terms of uh, industrializing change uh, of processes and technology. So this is in, in terms of this would be also application management and outsourcing uh, that they do not offer here. So different um, competitors or different uh, IT service providers that uh, we have seen here. Um, when we summarize it, uh, we see that the IT ecosystem is changing and uh, 
um, what we see here is uh, a, a first yeah, uh, uh, um, model that we have uh, uh, built where we see that if uh, companies are technology oriented, so more to the CIO organization, uh, like technology suppliers or infrastructure service suppliers, they will, in our opinion, lose uh, market shares. So this is here, lose market shares. Uh, companies like SaaS uh, vendors, but also business consultants, business service uh, suppliers or business product suppliers, they will uh, more, um, uh, or they will increase their market shares because they are more business user oriented. But we also have like offshore suppliers and cloud services specialists and new technology providers uh, that we see that are more CIO related, but they can, uh, like the offshore suppliers, uh, offer a com very competitive price uh, here, which is in terms of uh, um, uh, cost pressure, a very good argument uh, for, the, uh, for the customers. Application software vendors, uh, we see in the middle, so like uh, SAP and so on, if they do not transform into more uh, a SaaS kind of model, uh, the, uh, we do not see that they will um, win against uh, other competitors here. Um, and uh, that's what we also see when we compare uh, 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 Salesforce, Salesforce uh, um, are quite good here compared to SAP. Uh, in terms of mark winning market shares. Okay, so uh, this is a model that we've seen and we also put, have, uh, put in or evaluated uh, the apps related IT services market and the top 20 uh, companies that we observe in the market in the EMEA market. Uh, you see the bubble size which is the um, which is the revenue of the companies. These are the revenues uh, of uh, 2015. And uh, on the on the here you see company growth minus market growth. So if the company growth is higher than the market growth, then we see uh, that they are winning market shares. So and we can uh, divide these into three different groups. So more IT related companies like ATOS, HP Enterprise, CGI, T-Systems, Sopra Steria, IBM, SAP, they are losing uh, market share. So this is SAP consulting here, not SAP uh, the product uh, related uh, revenue, just the, um, uh, just the services part of SAP. Uh, they are more traditional players because they are not so much related to the business users uh, as for instance, PwC, Deloitte, or KPMG, that have a real good access to, for instance, or especially to the finance departments here, and uh, also, but also to the CXO level uh, in these company, uh, companies. Uh, companies like Capgemini, but also uh, very much Accenture, here you see, they have evolved uh, due to their growth platforms and uh, changing their go to market away from CI organization more to uh, the C-suite, uh, they have changed um, their go-to-market and, and uh, these uh, pays out for, for Accenture, for instance, in uh, winning market shares. But we also have uh, winners on the, uh, on the left side here that are more CIO organization, uh, more related to, to CIO organizations like Cognizant, Tech, Mendra, uh, Infosys, HCL, TCS, or Vipro, uh, which are Indian-based suppliers uh, that can offer uh, sometimes a superior price model. So they have uh, uh, built up good quality in terms of uh, on-site uh, capabilities, but also in terms of transformational capabilities. They are uh, heavily investing and they are, want to change their also they go to market there and they invest in these uh, in these uh, capabilities, but uh, they are more related uh, in terms of visibility in, in EMEA, uh, in the CIO organization and also in their go to market, but they will uh, or have uh, started to change that. So there we see that they are also uh, growing and um, are um, 
uh, increasing their market shares compared to their uh, traditional providers that we see here. So definitely uh, this group here uh, has to change uh, their go-to-market and go more the business user way uh, and uh, like also these uh, companies uh, that will do in order to come into this growth area that we see here. So uh, it's very important when we come to uh, some recommendations uh, that we have here uh, in uh, that uh, um, that companies that are placed more on the left side, the CIO organization, have to uh, close the gap between digital and business, so or between IT and business, uh, and uh, <clears throat> to become more business user oriented. Because we can now see that uh, these companies are uh, winning market shares against uh, the competition here, uh, but. Uh, it, they have to stay competitive in the commodity services market and differentiate in transformational services. But the transformational services, as we've, uh, as, as we've said uh, in the beginning, uh, transformation and digital transformation is always all, uh, a business transformation. Uh, so uh, the differentiating services, <clears throat> they have to be more business outcome uh, focused uh, in order to differentiate. And business outcome focus is uh, only a first step in uh, in terms of staying in time and budget, or is the or um, um, uh, or achieve uh, a time to value or an ROI uh, due to a, a consulting and system integration project, but more into terms of uh, we achieve for our customer a growth of X, Y, that percent, uh, and so on. So these, the, the, the conversation has to be more business oriented uh, in terms of uh, the latter one. Okay, so we have now 37 minutes. Uh, are there any questions till then? Second. I, I want to open so up it for Q&A. We have a question here. This presentation is EMEA focused. Do you have similar analysis on North America market? Yeah, we are working on that. So uh, actually, it wasn't ready yet, but uh, we are doing. Uh, I'm, I'm working on it, and we will come up with the numbers and the, the same analysis for all, for the North American market as well. But unfortunately, uh, some numbers weren't ready, so we couldn't present it yet, but we will come out with that in, uh, in, uh, in, in short term. Just a short reminder, everybody can use the chat function on the right hand of this uh, presentation to ask questions right now. Anything else that is going to be asked afterwards will be answered via email. So you get the opportunity to ask questions now. I think everybody got all the information he or she needs right now. Um, yeah, thank you, Christian, for this interesting presentation. And yeah, as an attendee, you still have the opportunity to write an email to w.lerscher at pack-online.com. And we're going to send you slides and answer questions as needed. I wish you all a very nice evening and weekend. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.